Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a factoring problem where we are supposed to factor this polynomial x to the fifth power plus x to the fourth power plus one. All right, at this point, you may just want to pause the video and try this problem yourself first before you watch the solution. Okay, let's get started. Now, we do have x to the fifth power plus x to the fourth power plus one. Obviously, this is not going to be like a perfect square or sum of cubes or anything like that. This is actually going to be kind of different. So we're gonna be using a very special strategy here. And there's actually a general method for these kinds of expressions if they follow a certain pattern, and this one does, but I can only tell you about that later. Okay, so what do we do? Well, uh, for these kinds of expressions, we actually add and subtract something. But you also have to be familiar with some of the things. For example, uh, before we get started with the process, let me go ahead and tell you a couple things here. So, and in another video, maybe we can talk about that too. Like there's an expression like this one that could also be factored x to the fifth power plus x to the four. I mean, x plus x to the fifth power plus x plus one. This is another polynomial that's factorable pretty much by the same method. Or there's another one still uh, with the 13th power, 7th power, so on and so forth. But we'll probably continue this series if uh, it becomes popular, depending on the, you know, the demand. Uh, let's see how that goes. So for this polynomial, this is the trick that I'm going to be using. But before I get into that, I just want to talk about something else, which is going to help us solve this problem, actually. So that is going to be completing the square. As you know, if you have uh, an expression like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, those are com uh, considered perfect squares, right? So when we say completing the square, this is what we're talking about. We're given an expression and then we're trying to make it into a perfect square. And why would you do that, right? So something like, for example, x to the fourth power plus 4. You could complete the square and then factor it using some uh, difference of two squares method. Normally, we know that the uh, sum of two squares cannot be factored, but in special cases, uh, there's a way to factor it. And by the way, this is called Sophie Germain. Maybe we can talk about that in another video. Okay, anyways, so here's what I wanted to talk about before uh, we started solving this video, because you might be asking like, why is he doing that, right? What's the reason behind it? And there's actually a reason behind it. So if you have that foundation, it's easier to factor these kinds of things. So what is that foundation? Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Suppose you were given this polynomial, x to the fourth power plus x squared plus one. Would you be able to factor it? Well, a lot of people are probably thinking, well, I can just replace x squared with u, then I'm gonna be ending up with u squared plus u plus one, which is obviously not factorable, and you might uh, know that this is actually an expression that's always going to be positive because of the discriminant, right? If you go out and calculate the discriminant, this is a parabola that's never going to intersect or touch the x-axis. So, in that sense, it's not really factorable. There are no factors. But how do you proceed? We don't make this substitution. We do something else. And that is called completing the square, okay? So that's basically what I'm going to go into here. How do I complete the square? Well, first of all, you have to think, how can this be a perfect square, right? x to the fourth power plus x squared plus one. Okay, or when is it a perfect square? Or is it already a perfect square? Well, we've seen that it's not a perfect square already. Uh, so how do you make it a perfect square? Well, if you think about the first and last terms here, so let's go ahead and take a look at them like this one here and this one here. This one is actually x squared squared, and this one is one squared. So what are we missing? If you look at our pattern here, it needs to be one of these. And looking at the plus signs, I'm just guessing it's going to be a plus one, like this one. So how am I gonna go about it? So what I'm missing is actually two AB. But what is two AB? Well, if A is x squared, and then B is one, then two AB is just gonna be two x squared, right? So that's what I'm missing here. Well, I could just add that, right? Well, I already have one x squared, so why don't I just add another x squared? Okay, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So let me, um, I'll probably just copy that down there and continue from there. So let me do it here. 
So I have x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding another x squared, making it 2x squared, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. And I'm just going to subtract that extra x squared. Awesome. Now, this is pretty good because what this gives us is a perfect square minus another perfect square, which we can call difference of two squares. Isn't that awesome? But how do you write it? Well, I can write this as x squared plus 1 quantity squared minus x squared. Now, you see that uh, how this becomes a difference of two squares. And as you know, a squared minus b squared is difference of two squares. And it's always factorable into a plus b and a minus b. So that's what I'm going to use here. If you factor it out that way, we'll get x squared plus 1 plus x. According to the formula, x squared plus 1 minus x. But let's go ahead and write it in the standard form. x squared plus x plus 1 and x squared minus x plus 1. Awesome. I mean, if you don't believe that, you can just go ahead and distribute, and you should be getting this expression here. All right? Now, how does this help us solve this problem? Okay, you're going to see in a little bit. I'm going to manipulate my equation. So now I know that this polynomial here, x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1, has these factors. And these factors should be familiar to you. Why? Well, because those are part of the sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes formulas. So let me clarify what I'm talking about. If you factor x cubed plus 1, you get x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1. And if you factor x cubed minus 1, you get x minus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. Beautiful. So what does this mean? Well, this means that when you multiply these together, you're going to be getting all these multiplied together. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. I multiply these. I get difference of two squares. I get difference of two squares. And then I get this product. Make sense? Okay. So now you might be saying, you're, so you're saying that this is actually replaceable by that. Well, what happens if you do replace that, right? So if I go ahead and replace this with x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1, then I'll be getting something like this. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? Well, x to the sixth minus 1 is equal to x squared minus 1 times x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Now here, you can think of the substitution x squared equals u. And if you do that, you'll be getting u cubed minus 1 being equal to u minus 1 times u squared plus u plus 1. Isn't that awesome? We do get the difference of two cubes after difference of two cubes and the sum of two cubes come into play. Okay, awesome. So you see that those two are equivalent. And we could also arrive at this conclusion by manipulating the difference of six powers here and then kind of breaking it down constantly, right? Okay, so we could arrive at that re uh, resolution in a different way. But let's get back to our expression. So we're trying to factor here x to the fifth which is a totally different expression, a new page, plus x to the fourth plus 1. Okay, later on, I'll show you a different version of this problem. There are many different versions of this problem, and they're all fun. Okay, now what do we know? We know that x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 is factorable. Let me go ahead and write this in a different color. Okay, so we know that x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 is factorable as x squared minus x plus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. Which is difference of two squares, obviously. So now, how am I going to use that information? Well, if you just add x squared here, then you'll get this guy, and then you'll be able to factor it. But what does that bring you? Well, if you just go ahead and add something here, then you have to subtract it somewhere, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let me add x squared to this expression. Then I have to subtract it. Now, this is something that I can factor. Awesome. What about these two? Well, let's see what happens. They have a common factor. What is that? It is x squared, right? So I'm going to pull out the x squared. That's going to give me x cubed minus 1. Beautiful. And this guy is going to give me x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Why did I say awesome? Because for the fact that this guy here is factorable, and one of the factors is x squared plus x plus 1, and you'll see in a little bit why that's important. Okay, let's proceed. 
Now, what do I have? It, it still doesn't look like it's factorable, right? So, okay, so what? You broke it down into two pieces, but you still have to find a common factor, and I will find one. First of all, let's go ahead and see what we can do. You know that x squared plus x to the fourth plus x squared plus one is factorable this way, so I can just go ahead and write it down. x squared minus x plus one multiplied by x squared plus x plus one, okay? And then this guy here is x squared times x cubed minus 1. But x cubed minus 1 is what? Difference of two cubes. So we can factor it. How? Well, I can kind of break it down. I mean, break it down into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. This is great. Why? Now we get a common factor. This is why we kind of did the groundwork here so that uh, the transition wouldn't be too hard. Because if I just introduce this to you guys, maybe some of you are going to go like, oh, wow, where does this come from, right? This is where it comes from. It comes from the very fact that x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 is factorable in a really nice way. So what am I going to do next? I think the rest should be pretty obvious, in my opinion, right? So we do have a common factor, x squared plus x plus 1, x squared plus x plus 1. So what I can do here is I can just go ahead and take out the common factor. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we're going to be getting x squared plus x plus 1 as a common factor. And then here we'll, we'll get x squared times x minus 1. What I can do is I can actually go ahead and distribute that. That's going to give me x cubed minus x squared. Then I, I just need to add this plus x squared minus x plus 1. And when you go ahead and simplify this expression, the first factor is going to be x squared plus x plus 1, which was our common factor, which was super important for this problem. And then this one here is simplified a little bit because x squared cancels out, and you end up with x cubed minus x plus 1. Okay? That's pretty much it. And obviously, this is the result of what? x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 1. And you can always distribute to check this out, right? So our fifth degree polynomial, the quintic, can be factored into a quadratic and a cubic like this. Does that mean it has roots? That's for you to find out. If this cubic has real roots, which it has to have at least one, then this quintic will also have at least one real root. All right? I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.